the first thing that we usually come across is the mood swings of the youth and that is one of the common and the main problem of mind too. So I just want to clear over here is that the mood swing, it gets so intense at times that it converts into anger and bad temper. So how do we deal with that and eventually end at a particular moment? Great question. So our, our moods are impacted by many things. When we look at youth, the primary thing that impacts our moods in a lot of cases is actually our hormones, okay? As when we are young and all of our bodies are changing, our bodies are flooded, flooded with hormones. These are chemicals. And the chemicals are creating all kinds of chemical reactions in our bodies and in our brains. And those chemical reactions are impacting how we think, how we feel. So this is the time when, by laws of nature, our bodies are now being ready to have children. By God's grace, with society the way that it is, we, no long, we don't need to start having babies the moment that we start going through puberty. But if you go back in history, when life expectancy was very, very short, when a lot of babies died in childbirth or within the first year of their life, it was evolutionarily advantageous that people started making babies very early. Now, I mention this because even though our societies have changed, our culture has changed, our ways of life have changed, thankfully, because obviously being, you know, a young person and having to also be a parent is not an ideal situation at all. You're still a child. You should be a child, not a parent. But our bodies physically, chemically, have all of these chemicals flowing through them. Now that creates everything ranging from lust to a lot of these mood swings around anger, around desire, that has to do with our sense of ego, our sense of identity, our sense of territory. And a lot of this goes back really to our, our ancestors, our evolutionary time when we had to fight, fight for our territory, fight for the right to procreate, it has nothing to do with our world today. But the chemicals are still there because physical evolution takes a long time to happen. Cultural evolution happens very quickly, a couple hundred years, even within 50, 75 years. But physical evolution takes thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. So that's one of the main causes of these moods. Another cause is the food we eat. Youth tend to eat a lot of junk food a lot of sugar, a lot of carbs, a lot of processed food, erratic eating times, eating when we should be sleeping, sleeping when we should be eating. That also messes up our internal chemistry. Then you've got this time where we are individuating from our parents. We've been kids. Whatever our parents told us, we just did it. Now suddenly we're at an age where we feel like, hmm, what do I want? What's my role? Who am I? And a lot of this gets sort of rebellion against parents, against authority. There's a lot of competition. Who's going to be the popular one? Who's going to be this? Who's going to be that? And it's important as youth to realize that all of these things are really natural. 
it's not about you. It's about your physical body as something that is impacted by thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years worth of evolution. But when the mood swings arise, the question then becomes, okay, so now I'm having this mood. Doesn't mean I have to act on it. It's just chemistry. It's just that there's a momentary kind of flood of some chemistry in my brain. But I'm not a slave to chemistry in my brain. And that's where our meditation practice is so powerful because it allows us to have that control. We can see, we can witness these waves of lust, of anger, of competitiveness, of feeling like we're not good enough, insecurity. We can watch these waves come in our brain with realizing, I don't have to act on it. That's not me. I'm not the chemistry in my brain. And then we gain a sense of autonomy, of agency over that. So yeah, there's a chemical swing in my brain. But I don't have to choose how I act, how I speak, how I live accordingly. But we also do things that we can do to make that less. So eat more healthy foods, eat less sugar, eat less processed foods, eat on time, stay away from drugs and alcohol. They just really mess up your brain chemistry. And be compassionate with yourself. You're going through a very, a very difficult and transformative time of life. Bring all of your tools into place, your meditation, your yoga. Choose your friends very carefully also. The power of association is very important. Look around at the people you hang out with and ask yourself, is this what I would like to be? Is this how I want to be? And make sure that your friends are people who embody how you want to be. Because if you're not into alcohol and drugs and skipping school and being irresponsible and being rebellious, but your friends are people who live like that, then you're handicapping yourself. You're unnecessarily creating a situation where you are more likely to be influenced in directions you don't want to go. That's why we talk about satsang, the association of the truth. We talk about the sangha, right? Those I associate with. Choose your friends very carefully. So compassion for yourself, understanding that you are not the chemistry in your brain, but doing whatever you can to help balance that chemistry through food, sleep on time, have a proper sleep schedule, go to sleep in the p.m., wake up in the a.m. We're going to sleep in the a.m. and waking up in the p.m., right? Go to sleep on time, wake up on time, have some meditation, have some yoga, get Exercise. Exercise is fantastic for balancing our brains. These days we just sit and we stare at our screens all day long. Get out into nature. Be in nature. Be in the trees. Be in the forest. Be in the water. Be on the beach. Be wherever you can be in the natural world. It resets our brain chemistry you so much for that enlightenment because that was the need of the hour because this is one of the most common problem that the youth faces because they are at a tender age and they don't know what is going on with their physical world what is going on with their emotional body life and all thank you so much for enlightening that mm -hmm.